Now, the reason why we're installing this Sure Start or Soft Start is because we can start our three and a half and our four ton on this 12 kilowatt grow watt low frequency off grid. We can't start either one of them on the six kilowatt grow watt low frequency off grid or on this MPP 5000 uh, watt uh, dual voltage. These are all dual voltage, so you can run 120 or 240. So we're hoping that we'll be able to, once we put the sure start in, we'll be able to start it with this one and this one. So we're going to go take a look at that and install that now. Today on DIY Solar Power with Papa, we bought a soft start and we're going to be taking a look at how to install that. So right now we have our air conditioner running and if you don't have an amp meter and you can't tell what the inrush current is, if you look on your specification label and you go right into here to this LRA for the compressor, that's your inrush current amps. And then this should be your running amps. And then you'll also have your phase um, 60 hertz, I mean, and then one phase motor, that'll be 208, 230. So if you can't measure that, just look at that and you'll be able to see that you're going to be able to need to get to at least 75 amps to start this compressor up. So what we did was we took off the screws there, there, and then around here. So it was only like four screws and we're able to completely take this off. <clears throat> so we'll have to get in here and have to mount that in there and have to turn our power off. But right now, we got our box yesterday. Let's cut this open and see what we got so oops okay so if we open up our box we have our hyper engineering soft start they also call it a sure start and if you look on here we have the 230 volt 16 to 32 volt or um, amps and that's it for the box so we can get rid of that box over there and let's open this up and see what we have so they're showing you on that um, what you can expect Anyways, the, uh, they have several different ones for 115 volt, 230 volt, and then another 230 volt one. And then for the three phase motors, if you have that, they also have a 208, 230, a 380, 415, and a 460. So they've got a variety of these. So let's go ahead and take a look in the box and see what's in here. Okay, so we have something in here. It's about the California warning. And this is a crimp correct size ferrules to end ensure proper termination so there's something we'll take a look at okay our air conditioner just shut off this is the instruction guide so on the instruction guide we have a wiring schematic a parts list down here and if we flip it over, it's going to give us step-by-step -step instructions on how to install this. 
So if we also look in here, they give you some parts in here. We'll see what those are for. And this is the actual sure start that we're going to install. And there's actually a back plate on here that you mount and then you snap this on and they also give you four wires here and they already have the ends crimped on some of these and then they also have on the red they have a crimp on there so let's get into this and see what we're going to need to do so the first thing that we have to do is disconnect all voltage so we're going to go over here and we are going to disconnect this here but we're also going to go and turn off our breakers for the unit upstairs because that still has power that comes to this unit we don't want to short that out so we'll be right back so we're going to go ahead and turn off our ac this is the ac downstairs ac upstairs and we also have the air handlers so we're going to turn all these off so that we don't have any power going to any part of the AC. Okay, so we went to the breaker box and we turned off all the power to actually both the three and a half ton and the four ton on all of this stuff. So there's absolutely no chance of us having any problem with that. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to take a pair of insulated insulated pliers and since we just had this running I'm going to short out these terminals here and make sure oops and make sure that there's no nothing left in this capacitor as we start messing with it installing this stuff so we're just going across all the terminals to making sure that it's completely discharged so okay so we got that there's a fuse right there and we're gonna look at our instructions and our instructions say to secure the base of this um, inside the box here somewhere. So we're going to do that and be right back. So we just went ahead and put markings on there to be able to mark where we want to mount that. And now we're going to take and put two screws in there, short screws, self-tapping, to hold this in place so we went ahead and mounted the bracket that's going to hold it and we use these self-tapping screws and a phillips bit to be able to secure this in there now we should be able to just put this in there and it should be able to just there we go snap in place now it's securely in there got all our wires are loose around it so we're good okay so now we're gonna see what the directions say next so we have that mounted we did this and now it says remove the compressor run wire from the capacitor or run capacitor terminal and we're going to strip the end of that cut it off and 
we're going to attach the compressor run wire to the sure start right up here the run winding so we're going to install it in there so we'll be right back so what we did was we just took off of right here our compressor run wire and we back we pulled it back through this thing because it was kind of folded over so now we're getting ready to strip the wire here and then we're going to connect it right here right through the side now we secured the compressor run wire right here and the next thing it tells us to do on here is okay we do that now we're going to attach the brown wire supplied with the sure start to the capacitor terminal and the sure start the next thing we're going to do is take this brown wire that's been supplied oops and we're going to put it in here in the run capacitor and we're going to go ahead nice and tight and then we're going to go to the run capacitor fan and if we look on here I don't know if you can see in the back or not oops see if we can go from this side not sure but it says fan back there behind this behind this brown wire so in the instructions here it says to identify the capacitor the cable connecting the capacitor run cap and remove the connection to the run cap and attach the flag and brown wire to the same terminal on the run cap so we just did that so we have this wire attached back here for the common now this wire is going to go right here see it right there we're going to put it on the common side of the compressor get pushed on there there we go got it locked on there tuck that in and that one's done so the next wire is the blue wire this end right here is going to go into this top one the start winding it's going to go in this one right here if you can see that and then the other end is going to go to the blue here which is perm on the capacitor i don't know if you can see that there it is so they'll go on there so we're going to go ahead and connect those okay so we connected the blue wire to our sure start which is on the top terminal here and that is to the start windings and then we also went down here i don't know if you can see that on there but it says herm for the blue we have this light blue wire that's already attached we just attached this dark blue wire on my finger right there on the clip so that's all connected let's go to the next one and the next one is we're going to attach the flagged end of the blue wire to the other end of the road capacitor ensuring that the terminals on the capacitor also joins to the start winding of the compressor this is the herm that's what we just did now attach the red wire supplied to the terminal of the sure start so we're gonna take this wire right here and it's basically got the same ends and we're gonna attach it to the sure start 
on the only one we can do is down here on this. Let's attach that. Okay, we had to stop for a moment and go run over to Home Depot to buy some of these connectors. We actually used the one with the round opening on it. And we connected this red wire, the last wire they gave us, into the bottom here where it says active. And then we had to connect it down here. So that's where we had to take and crimp this, this yellow end right here on here. So that should be all of our connections that we have. Now we should be able to turn our power back on at the breaker box and put our fuse back in and try starting it up and seeing what kind of a surge we get after we start it up. Just to let you know, the wire, this red wire, came with this end on both sides, which was fine for this side. So you can see the brown on there, the brown on this. But we had to cut that off, strip about a half inch off, and then crimp that on there. So I just wanted to let you know that that was on the one end. So all we had to do was actually really just buy this one end terminal. So let's go ahead and turn the power back on. Okay, so we just did our first soft start before we had 72 to 75 inrush amps. And on our first try here, we had an inrush of 24.1 amps. So we're going to verify that we have cold air coming out. And we're going to shut this down. We're going to restart this four times to get it to program it. We'll be right back. Okay, so it's 98 degrees out. I just went and checked. And we have 68 degree air after one minute of being on. So the air conditioner is running. So, like I said, we had an inrush of 24.1. Let's clear this. Um, and it looks like we're actually using 11.9 amps to run this right now. So let's go ahead and shut this down. And I'll come right back and we will start it up again. So we had to wait about four or five minutes in between. And darn it, the, uh, the inrush on this was 24.4 the second time. The first time it was 24.1. And it looks like our current is 13.2 amps. So um, we're going to let it run for a few minutes and cool it down. And it says to cycle it four or five times to get it to optimize. So we'll be right back and start it up again. down to 16.6 .6 amps and that's the force start on it so that's pretty good from 72 to 75.